Vaxi actually freaking cooked. This is easily the best Vaxi mouse that I have ever used. And in this video, I will show you why. But before we do that, I do want to mention that this was indeed sent out to me by Vaxi themselves, which of course means that I will be shilling this mouse endlessly. And my opinion is as biased as can be. And of course, I need to start my video with telling you that you need to subscribe and also hit the notification bell right next to it. Because if you're at all interested in these type of peripheral enthusiast reviews, you definitely need to do so. Because I'm trying my very best to upload every single week and cover all the latest and greatest peripheral stuff. But first of all, let's get into the unboxing experience. Some of you would expect a crazy fancy unboxing experience for a mouse that is almost 200 euros shipped to my place. But reality is, is that this is as minimalistic as can be and also as eco-friendly as can be, which I am a big fan of. Inside of the box, you of course get your 4K receiver. Since all vaccine mice from now on are stock 4K, you get a rubbery USB A to USB-C cable which is now new and that's already it. In terms of the weight in a stock condition this comes in at around 60 grams which is definitely a bit more on the dense side of mice in our enthusiast scene. In terms of the QC this is the first time this year that I can say that this is perfect. Virtually no side wobbling, virtually no grinding, zero flexing whatsoever of course, and just overall a really, really solid experience. And because I want to give credit where credit is due, I want to start off with the engineering section of this video. In my NPO1S review, I told them that if they were only to use a through hole pole system for the mouse click so you wouldn't be rubbing plastic on plastic grinding on those surfaces on the clicks, which just feels freaking awful, this mouse would be so much better. I also said that if they would only get rid of that freaking endoskeleton that they used, they could easily get down to around 60 grams. Guess what? They did all of what I said in my video. As you can see on screen, this now no longer has an endoskeleton. It now uses that exact through hole pole system for the main clicks that I was talking about in order to eliminate button wobbling. So the only thing right to do here for me is to take all credit for it. But funny stuff aside, let's get into the actual shape of this thing. If you're not familiar with the XES, aka the sex mouse, this thing was first meant for work and also play. The main target of this mouse was to create a comfortable shape for everyone to use and just having the most optimal symmetrical shape possible where they have this formula of those three contact points which are in a triangle over here and when you use the mouse that is basically what you experience with most types of grips you have those three main contact points that are over here and then also if you play a palm grip up here of course the side profile is definitely on the flatter side it almost looks like an fk style shape because there is a no crazy hump anywhere it is definitely more of a century hump shape for sure however because of that wide support towards the rear this is absolutely usable for an aggressive claw grip you can also do a relaxed claw grip with this thing but please only do that if you have tiny hands. If I were to do a relaxed claw grip with my 19 by 10 hands, my fingers are absolutely edging over here, just like me at 2 a.m. But if you do an aggressive claw grip with something like 19 by 10 hands, I can definitely recommend this thing because I feel right at home despite of this being a pretty flat shape. And for me, being able to use a flatter type shape at this size is very uncommon. Something like the ULX Medium or the HDX, for example, which also are very flat shapes, I simply cannot claw grip. At least least not comfortably, mainly because it doesn't have that support for your claw grip that this rear type of hump actually supports. And since the sides are very flat on this mouse, this is now officially the best fingertip grip mouse from Vaxi. You have so much space to put your fingers on. And of course, you also have that hump that flares out towards the rear that you can support your pinky on if you're one of those people. So this mouse just feels freaking awesome for any type of aggressive or fingertip grip for sure. If you have tinier hands than me, you can definitely also palm grip this thing. Since the overall slope to the rear is very well distributed and you can definitely make a lot of surface contact down there despite it being a very flat mouse so it is overall just a very safe shape especially due to that width that doesn't make you feel uncomfortable unlike the op1 for many people out there which is super skinny towards the front now in terms of the coating i don't even need to touch upon it because vaxi coating is simply one off if not 
the best out there. And Game Gear and Vaxi are simply the kings of coatings. The buttons on his mouse are actually a bit more tactile this time around. They're not crazy spammable and you definitely never have any misclicks on this thing, but they're also not heavy to the point where you can't spam them. As I already said, there's virtually no side button wobbling over here and definitely no grinding happening. The side buttons are also almost perfect. I don't really have any noticeable pre or post travel and they feel great and also spammable. The scroll is also not too heavy and also not too light. It's definitely a tiny bit more on the lighter side and it can definitely be spammed. The scroll click is pretty heavy and it is not my favorite out there. In terms of these skates, they still have these dyed white skates and they definitely have a bit more friction than your typical core pads that are 100% PTFE. I am not the biggest fan of these skates, but they do work. In terms of battery life, this thing is not the greatest thing ever. It is definitely a smaller battery. I think it was around 335 milliamp hours or something like that. And on the stock performance mode with 2K enabled, which I use for most of my games since I know that it just works, it ran out of battery within a few days and I've had to charge it almost three times already. And that is within one to two weeks of use and I also always turn my mouse off when I don't use it. Maybe they can improve the battery life in the future but then again they are very esports and performance oriented so I don't think that they will dive in too deep for it because they simply want a mouse that has the max performance out there with a wireless mouse. The high polling rate implementation on a 3950 here is absolutely great and I can definitely tell the difference between 1K and even 2K in games like Fortnite or Kovacs. It simply feels amazing and the only thing that's holding it back here is of course the battery life. What is great is that of course the dongle is included but it better damn be at the price tag that they sell this thing at. Normally I would talk about software here but since there isn't any yet, all you need to do is simply use this button for everything. If you need any guidance on how to do any settings, definitely check out the Vaxi YouTube channel. If they've already uploaded their video where they go in depth on all of these settings, I will link it down in the description below. The main functionality here is of course that you simply press the button once in order to change the setting where you're currently at. Here I'm changing my polling rate on the wired mode. If you hold down your button for an extended period of time, you swap over to the next setting and then yet again you can iterate through the different stages of all those settings. The only thing that I had to change personally, which was a bit annoying, was the liftoff distance. I had to set it to the second setting which was a bit annoying to find the key combo on. I really wish that there were simply a guide inside of the packaging because they do have a QR code which simply leads to their homepage. So I wish that they could at least do that QR code for the specific mouse that you're buying or at least have something on the backside where you can see how to change those settings because it is not too user friendly. But as I've kind of hinted at, they might be doing a software in the future. So I'm definitely hoping that they will do either a web based driver or a portable EXE, which would also make a lot of sense for LAN events if you don't have any internet access. Now, when it comes to my opinion about this mouse, I fucking love this thing. I could absolutely just zone out and game with it and simply play and don't really think about it too much. The only thing I kind of felt was a slight discomfort in my ring and pinky finger when playing because I do play a aggressive claw grip. And as you can see, my fingers are definitely nearing the end of the mouse up here. So I need to curl my fingers quite a bit. And when I do that for an extended period of time with a shape that is this wide towards the front, it can definitely be discomforting. Other than that, this thing is freaking awesome and I'm so happy that they re-engineered this mouse from the ground up. The only thing that I hate about this mouse is that if I were to buy it here in Switzerland, I would have to pay well over 200 euros including shipping and import fees, which is absolutely ludicrous for a wireless mouse. That even makes the Viper V3 Pro look affordable. But then again, if you're in an EU country or especially if you're in the US, this is much more affordable. You can currently buy this thing in the US for $139.99 and I think that that price is perfect. But if you're in an EU country and you want to buy it here in Europe, it is already at 159.99 euros. That is definitely quite the price tag. And if you're not inside of the European Union, but you're still in Europe buying this thing, adding shipping and import fees will make this thing skyrocket over 200 euros. To the conclusion, who is this mouse for? If you want a rock solid mouse with perfect QC, completely re-engineered from the ground up with a 3950 sensor that simply supports a high polling rate that that just works and you also happen to play fingertip and really like smaller mice, this is the perfect mouse for you. If you have 18.5 or 18 by 10 centimeter hands and play an aggressive claw grip, this is also more than usable. Even for a pincer claw grip, this thing is 
amazing but please keep in mind that this is definitely a smaller mouse for me with my 19 by 10 centimeter hands and my aggressive claw grip this is definitely on the edge but for the time that i did spend on this thing i definitely did enjoy it whether or not this mouse is actually worth the price tag that is for you to decide it highly depends on your financial situation and also the country that you live in but all i can say is that from an objective standpoint this mouse slaps coming in at 60 grams definitely expect this to not feel like a feather but considering that it's made competition is going to be the upcoming op1w 4k this can definitely compete with that that's about it for this video though if you have at all been enjoying this type of content and you're interested in seeing more of these peripheral enthusiast type reviews please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell right next to it other than that i'll see you guys very soon peace out